Good afternoon. I'm Will Kaiser, a partner at K&L Gates. k &L Gates is a proud sponsor of the Energy Storage Association News Desk here at the Energy Storage Association's 2019 Conference and Expo. Because we're, we're News Desk sponsor, we get the opportunity to interview some really cool people. And I, here with me today, I have Sarah Salati, ex Executive Vice President and Chief Commercial op Officer of the New York Power Authority. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks. Hey, it's nice, nice to meet <laughs> nice you. Nice to meet you. So you joined NIPA about uh, nine months ago. Why don't you tell me how your first nine months have been going? It's been excellent. Really, the New York Power Authority is a unique platform in the nation, and I would argue the world. It's the best of the public and private sector, really, because NIPA is an operating business. We bid our assets into the market. We manage one-third of the transmission grid in the state and we're 100% self, self, uh, self-funded. So that enables us with our policy hat and the mission of improving the economic competitiveness and growth of New York State, enables us to do many new and advancing things for, for New York State and the energy sector more broadly. That's great. So why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about what kind of customers NIPA serves? So NIPRA is a load-serving entity. Uh, we're non-jurisdictional, uh, so we don't do not have to. We're not regulated by the PSC. We have a, a, a uh, we do not have any retail or residential customers. We have three main customer segments: uh, commercial and industrial that are benefiting from our Recharge New York and other low-cost hydro power programs. We have our municipalities and co-ops. We provide the power for over 50 munis and co-ops throughout the state. And then we have serve the government agencies as well across the state of New York. And what we are able to provide them is both uh, low-cost power as well as market power in some cases. And then beyond that, other clean energy services of which energy storage is one example. Great. So how are you using energy storage to serve your customers' needs? Well, NIPA really was looking at how are we going to advance the clean energy grid of the future, meet Governor uh, Cuomo's Green New Deal, which is looking at six gigawatts of solar, three gigawatts of storage, and nine gigawatts of offshore wind. It's a pretty impressive numbers. It is, it is, and they, they, continue, to, <laughs> they continue to ratchet up. But NIPA uh, took a step back and said, well, how is it that we can best advance the clean energy future? And we came up with three moonshots. One, one of which is Evolve, which is looking at building out the electric vehicle charging infrastructure throughout the state of New York on major transport corridors. And there, we're ultimately electrifying the transport industry and bringing small batteries that can in the future be aggregated to help support the management of the grid. Secondly, we have offshore wind, and I see a lot of potential to be preparing renewables uh, with batteries, and so I look forward to, particularly as we bring offshore wind into relatively congested interconnection points, the opportunity to put storage there to help relieve and do some T&D deferment. And then the third is, which is of, of greatest consequence really to the Energy Storage Conference, is our flexibility moonshot where we're dedicating $250 million over the next four years to really help support the private sector implement storage in New York State. Great. Those are really cool initiatives. Yeah. So I was reading in the in the press recently the North Country Energy Storage Project. Can you tell me a little bit about that? I think you just issued an RFP around that? Yes, we have an open RFP for the North Country Energy Storage Project. It's 20 megawatts, 20 megawatt hours. We're in search of an EPC contractor for that. We did analysis of the grid, and what we saw was there's an opportunity there for energy arbitrage, not dissimilar to where there's a lot of sun, like here in our Arizona, being able to shift the energy from day until night. There, we have wind turbines that are running, and frequently in that zone, reducing the pricing and turning it negative. So we saw a use case there to essentially charge the battery uh, when the pricing is negative and obviously discharge it uh, when the, the pricing is positive and help relieve uh, the congestion in the area and bring those renewables downstate. Great. That's uh, great opportunities. Yeah. So we're at the Energy Storage Association conference and we're talking about energy storage. So I'm going to ask you the kind of the, the yeah. question I've been asking everybody. Where do you see, what do you see for the future of energy storage? Where do you see things going? Right. Well, with my New York State hat on, I really feel that we're at a tipping point. Any of the number of participants here can talk to you about the robustness of the technology and the continuing evolution of new chemistries, etc. We have the cost curves that are continuing to decline with the economies of scale that we're, we're seeing. 
And the third kind of part of the stool is really the policy mm -hmm. to help push it just that much further along. And in New York State, between the three gigawatt goals that um, Governor Cuomo set, the fact that NYSERDA is now just issued 400 million in, in market acceleration bridge incentives, that NYPA is committing 250 million to partner with the private sector to implement storage projects. There's a lot of momentum there that I really think will uh, push it forward. And what's fascinating to me is that if you look at the interconnection queue uh, in the NISO, 90% of the storage projects are th that, that are there have been added in the last year. And now there are nearly two gigawatts of storage ready to be interconnected into the system. And, and so it's an exciting time. Great. Well, thank you very much for joining me here today. And I know happy hour is going on, so I think we probably should wrap this up and get back to happy hour. <laughs> Sounds good. Hey, Thanks. It's a pleasure meeting you. And thank you.